Hello everyone, welcome to my living room. My name is Matthew Ball and it is so good to be with you all today. I am a photographer of various different types, but my specialty is nature and landscape photography. It is truly an honor for me to be asked to speak with you all today. I've never really done anything like this before, but I am so excited to have the opportunity to share some of my work and talk about some of the experiences that I've had as a landscape photographer. Before I get started, I want to thank you all for letting me be a part of your group today. And I want to give a special thank you to Ms. Cheryl Lester for reaching out to me and inviting me to do this. It really means so much to me to have this opportunity. I want to start by telling a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia, and my main job actually has nothing to do with photography. I'm an officer in the United States Navy, currently training to be a tactical jet pilot. I went to college at the United States Naval Academy and graduated in 2018. My first set of orders was to the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California to earn a master's degree in aerospace engineering. In June of 2019, I then reported to Pensacola, Florida to begin flight school as a student naval aviator. Now, almost a year later, I'm currently stationed in South Texas at Naval Air Station Kingsville, where I will learn to fly the T-45 Goshawk to eventually fly the F-18 or the F-35 for the Navy. The Navy has also afforded me the chance to travel all over and see some of the most incredible places. And that is where my story in photography begins. Throughout this video, I'll be showing my work as I talk about some of the experiences that I've had as a photographer. Now, I may not say something about each and every image, but my hope is to share some of the stories that go with the photos that I've taken over the years. One more thing before we get going, stay tuned at the end of the video because I'm going to be showing you all how you can get to my website and order any of the images that you've seen today and more as a print or digital download. I'll even have a discount code to save 10% at checkout, so you don't want to miss that. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to roll my intro, we'll get started, and I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> So I've been fascinated by cameras and photography for a large portion of my life, but it wasn't until the summer of 2017 that I first got a real camera and was able to take it to somewhere really cool and put it to good use. I was on an internship in San Diego, and in my free time, I took the five hour drive up to Joshua Tree National Park and was able to capture the Milky Way, something that I had been wanting to do for a very long time. So I spent the day in the park scouting out some locations and then waited around for the sun to set and the stars to come out. And it wasn't until about 12 or one in the morning when the stars were finally out to where I wanted them to be and I started taking these photos. And I was absolutely blown away with the images that I was able to capture. And I would say this was the moment that kickstarted my passion for landscape photography. I was so excited by the images that I was able to come away with and couldn't wait for the opportunity to do something more. And so when I got my orders to Monterey, I started making a bucket list of places that I wanted to go and shoot. And the list got long fast, because I know there's a lot of stuff out there in California that I really wanted to see. And so when I had free weekends, I would take a road trip and this is what it would look like. And took everything with me as far as food and water and coffee and was able to fit a nice uh, cozy bed in the back of my car. And so that's how I would travel. Uh, and I would go and knock off the places on my bucket list. And the first place that I ever visited was Big Sur, which was only a 20 or 30 minute drive from where I lived in Monterey, which was absolutely amazing because I didn't even know Big Sur existed until I got out there in, in Monterey. And lo and behold, it's one of the most beautiful places in the entire world and it was right there, so accessible for me. Now, I'm from Virginia, and don't get me wrong, Virginia is a beautiful state, but we just don't have landscape quite like out on the West Coast where there's mountains going directly into the Pacific Ocean and rocky shorelines and all that. Now, the place that blew me away the most was right here, McWay Falls. I just couldn't believe that there was a waterfall falling onto a white sand beach in this perfect little paradise cove with turquoise water. It was just, too much, it almost seemed too good to be true, but there it was. That was probably my favorite spot in all of Big Sur, and I think it's easy to see why. Now as we move up the coast to the Monterey Peninsula, 
You'll see all these spots here were within five or 10 minutes driving distance from my house. It's just incredible that it was that accessible to me and I just couldn't get enough of it. Whenever I had free time, I was out taking photos of stuff. And over time, I started looking for new spots and new perspectives. So I invested in a, a little drone, a photography drone, and started taking some aerial photography. And that's what you see here. And some of the top down images that I was able to get were incredible. And I just loved how I could see the transformation of landscape as uh, the West Coast fell into the Pacific Ocean. And this was really cool for me because with the drone, you're able to get a perspective that we can't get as humans, really, unless you're taking a helicopter ride or something like that. And so being able to capture these images from above, I thought brought a whole new element into the viewing experience that was really cool and really fascinating to me. A good portion of these images here are from Asilomar State Beach, which was my favorite spot in all of the Monterey Peninsula to go to. It had an amazing beach with a whole bunch of rocks and tide pools, and the sunsets there were just absolutely stunning. I probably visited there more than anywhere else on the Monterey Peninsula. And this was where I fell in love with watching sunsets. Now, as a landscape photographer, the best time to be out is during sunrise or sunset, when the sun is low in the sky, casts nice shadows across the landscape, and gives a nice golden glow to everything, and even lights up the clouds with some beautiful color. But it was here that I realized why sunsets were so special to me. And not from the photographer's standpoint, but just the fact that every single day, there was a unique fleeting moment when the sun was gonna fall below the horizon and it wasn't gonna be the same as any other day before it. The conditions were always gonna be different. The best part of a sunset only lasts 10 to 15 minutes, if that. And if you weren't there to watch it, you'd miss it. So whenever I had the opportunity to watch a sunset, I grabbed my camera and went out there to capture it. Now, before we move away from the Monterey Peninsula, I have one more photo to show which was actually taken right in my backyard in Monterey. And I'm not gonna try and guess what kind of flowers these were, but it just goes to show that I didn't have to go driving hundreds of miles to find something beautiful. Sometimes it was right there in front of me and I just had to find it. Now, I had heard a lot about the California Redwoods before moving out there, but seeing it in person was the only real way to put it in perspective. Big Basin was just on the other side of Monterey Bay from where I lived. And seeing these trees for the first time really did blow me away. I mean, they are as big as people say they are. But it was here that I realized that not everything is right out in front of you. Sometimes you can get some really cool perspectives by just looking straight up. And I was really proud of these images that I came away with because they had a unique perspective looking straight up the trees that really showed off how tall they really are. Now, I wanna shift gears a little bit and talk about something that I think is really core to my experience as a photographer. In the beginning, I was completely obsessed with getting the image that I had set out for. And if at the end of the day I didn't have that, then I was upset. But over time, I realized that it actually wasn't about the image itself as much as it was my experience in getting that image. And now what's really cool is that when I look at my photos, I don't just take it for its face value. There's a whole story that exists behind it. I remember the whole process that I took to create that image, all the experiences I had, the places I had to travel to, that's all really unique to, to each and every photo and I'll never forget that. And that's why I have all these images printed out in my house because when I take a look at that, it's a flood of memories and nobody can ever take that away from me. And that's what I think is so special about photography. You can capture a single moment in time that represents so much more than what it actually is. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, well, that's exactly why. Here, for example, I'm in Yosemite, and it's probably January or February of 2019, and there was some rain in the forecast, but nothing crazy. On the last night I was there, it started raining, and it was just a torrential downpour, a cold rain that just wouldn't quit. I had to cook dinner, so I found a spot under a rock where I was able to light my fire and ended up making a delicious spaghetti and meat sauce that was the most comforting thing on a cold and rainy night. Here I also made uh, chicken and broccoli another night. But over that night, uh, that rain turned into snow and I ended up waking up to four or five inches of fresh snow. And here I am French pressing coffee that morning, getting ready for the day. And it was the most gorgeous thing that I had ever seen. I mean, that morning was nothing short of magical. Fresh snow in Yosemite Valley was just so beautiful. And I was able to get up before everybody else and capture these photos 
uh, when the snow was still fresh and pristine. And some of the photos that I have from that morning are some of my favorite photos that I've ever taken. A lot because it's a beautiful photo, of course, but also when I look at them, I remember the whole experience of cooking spaghetti under a, a rock in the pouring rain and waking up to fresh snow. Like all of that is what makes it so special to me. All those emotions, all the feelings that I had during that, I just remember when I look at these photos and, uh, and I'll never forget it. Now I made several trips out to Yosemite during my year in California. And what was really cool is that I was able to go to some spots more than once and capture images of the same scene just at different times of the year. And looking back, it's really cool to see how that scene changed over the course of the year and how much just a little bit of snow can completely change the ultimate feel of the image. And some of these are great examples of that. Here you see Yosemite Falls in the summertime, and the next photo you'll see is the same exact spot uh, after that morning of fresh snowfall. And it's just absolutely amazing to see how the snow completely changes the scene and gives you a whole new feeling. Yosemite will always be one of my favorite parks. There's just so much packed within a five mile radius of Yosemite Valley. It's just unbelievable. The first time you go there and look up with the granite walls towering over you will literally take your breath away. It's a really special place to me and I can't wait for the next time I get to go back there. We're heading to Eastern California now. Here you see a road map of the longest weekend trip that I ever made. And just one weekend, I drove over a thousand miles and spent more than 18 hours in the car, but it was most definitely worth it. The first stop that I made was at Hot Creek Geologic Site in Mammoth Lakes. And I actually got my car stuck in the snow trying to get here, but again, still worth it. But what was really cool about this spot is that it's the middle of the winter, but the creek itself is actually boiling because of the geologic activity that's going on under the surface of the earth. And I might add that the way that nature composes itself here with this winding river leading up to the eastern Sierras in the background seemed too good to be true, but it's really there. I spent most of this weekend in Lone Pine at a place called Alabama Hills, which is actually situated right at the foot of the eastern Sierras. It's actually right near Mount Whitney, which is the tallest peak in the continental US. Here you'll see a couple of compositions that look similar, but are just taken at different times of day. And I know I hinted at this earlier, but it's amazing to me how much a scene can change when the conditions are different. This photo here was taken at sunrise, and what I find so cool about it is that this scene only looks like this for maybe five minutes any given day when the sun is hitting it just right. And after that, it's gone. And I started to realize that as a photographer, because I'm trying to capture sunrises and sunsets all the time, I'm always seeing the most beautiful places in the world at the most beautiful times. And I think that's an important point because a lot of people do most of their exploring in the middle of the day when the sun's highest in the sky. And of course, these places still look beautiful at that time. But if you're able to see it at sunrise or sunset, it's just absolutely game changing. And so I strongly encourage you to seek out those fleeting moments of the day. Sunrise and sunset is when the earth is offering you everything it has in all of its glory. And most of the time it won't leave you disappointed. Sure, you might have to sacrifice some sleep here and there, but it's definitely worth it. These next few images are from the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes in Death Valley National Park. And I went out here for one evening uh, it was about a two and a half hour drive from Lone Pine, and of course it's in the middle of nowhere. Extremely hot, there's no water around, and really no cell service either. But I stayed there for sunset, and I'm so glad that I did because as the sun got lower in the sky, the shadows from the dunes started creating a playground of compositions, and I was able to walk away with more images than I ever thought that I would for one evening. The contrast between the light and the dark sides of the dunes were just really fascinating to me and they were all over the place and I just couldn't get enough of it. So I stayed there as long as I could until I was ready to go home. So I still had the two and a half hour drive back and about a mile walk through the middle of the desert. And before I got in my car, I had to dump out the sand from my shoes and it was literally like pouring out sand from a bucket. But it's those sort of sacrifices that make these moments really memorable for me. Most people might be pretty uncomfortable in that sort of situation, but I made it work. And to me, at the end of the day, it was definitely worth it. We're getting into the final segment of my video here. And this covers the road trip that I took when moving from Monterey to Pensacola for flight school. 
And I wanna show you a little bit about the planning process that I went through for some of these trips. And this doesn't just apply to this big road trip that I did, it was for pretty much every road trip that I made, even on the weekends. But the first thing I would do is create a list of all the spots that I wanted to visit on that trip. I would then go to Google Maps and find the best course of action to logically flow through all those points and then take that into Excel and create an itinerary of all the spots that I wanted to hit, uh, the locations that I wanted to shoot, when I wanted to shoot those locations, uh, whether sunrise or sunset, um, and then make any sort of notes or details that might be pertinent to shooting on location. I really enjoyed that planning process. It was quite meticulous, that's for sure, but it made me excited for the trip coming up and then was also helpful on the trip, just staying organized and making sure I didn't forget anything. The first national park that I hit on this road trip was Zion National Park in Utah. In a lot of these photos, you'll see a little person placed somewhere in the image, and that person is me. I actually used self-timer on my camera and set it for 10 to 20 seconds. We'll click the button and then run to where I wanted to be positioned, stand there, hear the camera click, and then walk back to see if I got my shot. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, and I had to do it again. But the reason that I included myself in these photos is not because I wanted a selfie of myself, but because I thought putting a person there showed the scale of the landscape around me. Sometimes seeing a two-dimensional image makes it hard to see what you're actually looking at. And I felt that putting a person in there somewhere gave you a true feeling of how much larger than life this landscape really is and how small we are compared to it. My next stop was Bryce Canyon National Park. And although I made this trip in late June, I still experienced some temperatures in the low 40s when I was here and I was not prepared for it. One morning I woke up for sunrise, threw on a shirt and some shorts, and walked out the door only to realize it was 43 degrees outside. And I didn't have any jacket or long pants to put on, so I had to deal with it. The coolest spot in Bryce Canyon is definitely Wall Street. It takes a little bit of a hike to get down to, but once you're there, you can walk right through this really cool slot canyon that has red walls and even a pair of trees growing right through it. I waited around here for quite some time trying to get the shot that I wanted because once the sunlight hit it just right, the canyon would glow up orange and it was absolutely amazing. Moving further east into Capitol Reef National Park, this picture here just highlights some of the textures that you can find in the southwest. I took this picture with my camera only about two feet above the ground. I just thought it was really unique how the light and the dark contrasted together with all the mud cracks. I'll have to say that Capitol Reef surprised me in the fact that it was not busy whatsoever. Most of the parks that I visited were super crowded because it was the middle of the summer, but Capitol Reef was not that way at all. There was nobody around, it was really quiet, and I was surprised because it was incredible. The landscape there was unbelievable, and there were so many different things that I didn't think I would find. And if you're adventurous enough, I highly recommend going through Cathedral Valley. It's a pretty rugged drive and there's no cell service out there, but it's so worth it. There's monoliths like the Temple of the Sun and the Moon here that just come straight out of the ground and it's amazing. I camped out under the stars there and ended up with some amazing Milky Way photos because there's zero light pollution out there. The stars were incredible. I then moved on to Moab, which is just an epicenter of amazing spots. You have Arches National Park right next to the Grand Canyon. These photos here are from Dead Horse Point, which is overlooking Canyonlands National Park. I was there for sunrise and I set up this composition overlooking the canyon and you'll see in the difference of this photo and the next one how the light changed and completely erupted the scene in just the course of a few minutes. I mean these two photos were probably within five minutes of each other. It's amazing how in just a little bit of time the conditions can completely change and everything just lights up like that. The rest of these photos are from Arches National Park and Monument Valley. But I want to take the rest of this time to say something that's really important to me. Over the past year, I've been able to see some of the most incredible places that our world has to offer. I mean truly beautiful places that take my breath away. And I have photography to thank for all of that. Photography is what motivated me to find out that these places existed. It's what motivated me to travel and drive thousands of miles to see some of these places. It's what motivated me to wake up in the middle of the night to capture the stars or wake up at 4.30 to shoot the sunrise. I realized that I would never have had those experiences had it not been for photography. 
And so that's why all of this is so special to me. But I also wanna encourage everybody else to seek out some of these experiences that I've had. And you don't have to have a camera to do it. These places exist in our backyard. They're some of the most beautiful places in the entire world. All you have to do is drive to it. Maybe wake up early one morning and catch the sunrise or stay up late and watch the stars. Just go, get out and explore. I promise you, you will not regret it. This world will take your breath away and you'll create memories and experiences that will last a lifetime. Okay, before saying my parting words, as promised, I'm gonna show you how you can get to my website and order anything as a print or digital download. So all you need to do is open up your internet browser and go to www.matthewbaughphoto.com. That will bring you to my homepage. Uh, here you can find my portfolio where you can view any of the images you'd want, or go over here to the far right and click on store. This will bring you to this page where you have landscape, cityscape, and astrophotography prints. And then this final one here is digital download. So if you're looking for a new desktop background, you can download a high resolution photo here. Uh, otherwise, you'll go into landscape prints and you'll find all the images that you've seen today and plenty more. Just click on this load more button. Um, you can find it here. And once you find the one that you'd like, you can go ahead and click on it and select your format and size. I have photo prints, canvas prints, metal prints, and acrylic prints on various sizes. Once you get what you want, you add it to your cart, and boom, there you go. View cart, and when you go to check out, this is important, you don't wanna miss this, enter a promo code. Here you're gonna enter your promo code, La Jolla 2020. I'll make sure that is up on the screen. And that's gonna give you 10% off your order for the three days following the release of this video for you all. Please note that COVID restrictions are making things a little bit more difficult. So shipping and handling might take a little bit longer than indicated, but I promise I will work as quickly as possible and get these images to you in no time. If you have any questions about your order or want a special order something, please don't hesitate to send me an email or send me a chat and I'll be happy to help you out in any way that I can. It really means a lot to me when other people want my work on their wall. So if you see something you like, go ahead and order it. I would really appreciate the support. That's all I have for you all today. Again, I wanna offer my sincerest thank you to all of you for letting me be a part of your group and share some of my work and my experiences in what I do. It is truly an honor for me. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you can take away some interesting facts, but at least saw some awesome images of our incredible world. If you have any questions or comments, please, Drop me a line. You can send me an email or find me on Instagram or Facebook. Go ahead and give me a follow too, as I'll have more content coming out in the future. Once again, my name is Matthew Ball. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm signing off.